So I'm just talking about some books that I had made. Um, here they are. Uh, they are something very easy that anyone could make. So it's more of my how-to in terms of why I did this, how I did this, the problems I have with this, and what is good about them. So that's the point of what I'm trying to make. Um, the reason why I was trying to get onto my blackboard is these books that came about, and then of course, publisher provided resources, came about as I'm trying to teach anatomy, trying to move from an in-class environment to an online environment. I start with, have my PowerPoints in class, and usually in class I'll do something where I've got something, some image or PowerPoint, and then I have a, used to have a overhead, and then it became a dot cam, and I'd have it shining over here, so I'm circling body parts and talking about lists of things that they should know about these body parts, and talking about them and standing on tables, moving things. And um, so in creating my online videos, I put a lot of these things together, then posted them online, and then started making handouts that would address student concerns and needs each semester. So eventually, I ended up with a, just show you my current class, I activated these things that I have since, so students are not quite as horrified of this, but Right now in unit one, we start with the endocrine system. Basically, you see these checklists, summary, study guides, study questions, study questions with the answers, notes, and then I have some quizlets that I put in there. So we, I ended up with an immense amount of handouts that, was that each were, were addressing specific needs of students, and individually, students liked, but collectively, I found over time, students were having a harder time navigating the resources. Plus, I'd say, oh, here's this great list of publisher resources that's out there, too. And they, you know, had their head was swimming with resources and didn't have a trajectory to go through. So that's really the focus of why I did what I did. Um, the other elements, I'm just going to reference some notes here. The other issue was the cost of textbooks. You know, Matt and I have <laughs> conversations about it and with our A&P is, you know, our books are over $200. It costs more than the course does. And in most of the cases, we don't use the textbooks. It's not like you have to read page X to X. It's anatomy. We're not sprouting new limbs. So things are fairly consistent from year to year. The, the, you know, the textbooks are good, but we don't really need it. So the other issue is when I created this, my packets and my information, I had five textbooks right in front of me. And so for each subject that I worked on, I tried to pull out what I felt was important, at least for my class, but also use terminology. It was consistent because some textbooks have their own variations, believe it or not. So I was trying, my goal was to reduce textbook costs for students. Um, so that way, anyone that came into my class could use any textbook, at least hopefully it would be within the last five years and from a reputable publisher. And then what I create is really the cliff notes of what they need to know from any textbook, and then they can read a bigger picture from there, but this is what I've pulled out that I find important, and this is what you're going to be tested on. And then they can read it in a larger context of a book if they so um, care for. Um, so I had lots of resources. I wanted to get away from having students buy a $200 textbook that they only used as a reference. And um, so originally I put all these things together. I printed these out. I would have to sneak in here on the weekends when Dean Holbrook was gone so I could print them out on the color laser printer so they could go back and forth. And I'd have like stacks like this big. And, you know, he'd, and then Juanita's like, we're out of, you know, red cartridge. I don't know, it's just going out really fast. <laughs> and so I would just be in here like a little printing crazy person and then give them to students because I was also getting help from the library of all the printing that was going on. So it was just a way of like, it's just cheaper. I could do it you know, front and back. I could do a color. Here's a packet. Just take it. So then it started to be a pain. So that's all of those things went together to say I need to do something. So I went on sabbatical. While I was on sabbatical, I had grand plans of doing a jillion things, and basically all I got to do was redo my video so I could pull out publisher-provided text or publisher-provided images, found some copyright-free images that I could use or drew them myself or found somebody better than me to draw them, put them in, redid my videos, update a few things, and that took the whole entire sabbatical. So then that was done, and um, you know, and then I put together 
the other packets and the elements in a logical form so students weren't clicking on these and printing, oh, here's a summary, here's the study guide, here's this. They could actually have a sequence that would be useful that was, and I also left many of these things online for them, but I also disabled many of them because, again, it was too confusing. So at least if they got the packet, I knew what they had, but a few things for people that did not want to get a packet, some of the more important things I left on there. So. Um, so though that was sort of the abbreviated form of the why and sort of the how. The quick form of the problems, oh, the other how was I um, wanted to, I also, other resources, for instance, we have these, this is like an anatomy review, this came from Pearson, they've got some cute pictures that you label and study questions and fill out graphs. Let me think of where's a graph. Nice little graphs to label and charts. So I also wanted to recreate some of these activities. So I made additional activities. So putting them all together, I found a, I went to Bowkers.com, got some ISBN numbers, I laid some ISBN numbers out there. I found a print shop, was able to print them in color and get them bound and sort of was doing all the kind of legwork to do that. So I was, thought I was all ready to roll. Then I get here and reread the intellectual property policy and then sort of like, hmm, I don't know if I'm breaking any rules, am I? I mean, ultimately this was just to get students' notes. So we have reduced costs for the school. We have more collaboration between teachers. So I post a lot of this online, all the new videos I made. I post a screencast. Anyone can link to them. Anyone can use them. Um, the notes are available to anybody. Um, and so I felt like, okay, here, it's out there, but let's get it so students can get them in hand and not charge them an arm and a leg. Because many, many years ago, when Premium store for Source first started here, it was so frustrating for people that you'd make a packet and you'd be like, here's 100 pages. They would stamp their publisher seal, their ISBN numbers. They would make like three or four cents per page, per copy, per student. The faculty member, although not doing it for money in the first place, it's a little frustrating someone else is banking on what you're doing. Then it was a pain to go get edits to put in there once you had things that you wanted to fix. Then they got sold at the bookstore for $40 for something that's that big. It was completely ridiculous. So those were my sort of frustrations going into this. And I don't really have a solution. So that's sort of the good and bad of what I'm talking about now is, so I've had some administrative challenges, not like not, I'm not clashing with the administration, so I don't mean to format it in that way at all, but some obstacles in order to allow this process to be more open to all people and an easier process for people to achieve, I then, instead of just putting it out there saying, here's my ISBN number, put my little barcode on there and saying it's out there, I thought, you know, let's just, I want to make sure I'm not stepping on anybody's toes and I just want to go the extra mile to make sure I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and a year and a half later, I still have not got an answer from the, pub, from the school in terms of what I can or cannot do. Wow. So basically, I sort of submitted this form to, it was back then, it was Horton and Goswami and said, look what I made, I'm sharing it with my colleagues, it's out there just give it to me so I could sell it here and I've got friends that teach anatomy in other places let me you know just do it but you can have all you want so I'm not limiting our use here at Yavapai by college it's still out there but give me freedom to do what I'd like with it could you please sign off here oh I don't know about that so that's been we need to think about it so that's really where we're at we're thinking about it right now about a year and a half it's a lot of thinking um, anyways, in the interim, I had a meeting with Dr. Horton and Dr. Goswami, and he's like, other schools face this all the time. You're not reinventing the wheel here at Yavapai College. What are other schools doing? So I took on the task of looking at policy, intellectual property policy, and my issue was because I was on sabbatical. Um, and most schools look at sabbatical book writing as a sabbatical is earned time off, so you're just, just earn the right to not actually have to be in the classroom. So you're a regular employee, so what you do on your own time or using college resources that are freely available to you is yours. You can write a book all you want and put it out there. 
But our school does not distinguish a sabbatical. They interpret the sabbatical as you are being paid specifically to do this task, and therefore it's contracted and we have some sort of rights within it. But had it been created without being on a sabbatical, it would really not be in the problems that I have. So I'm putting that out there not as a woe is me on me, but as a heads up to you. It's freely, like, don't feel like you're going to have these stumbling blocks. And I feel like they're not hurdles because when I showed them, here's the policies of all these people, you know, a sabbatical is part of our benefits package. You're not paying me to do it. I'm just redeeming my benefits now. And so we have rewritten some policy. I did it last year and it's just sitting in Senate, not really moving forward right now. So, but we did get Veterans Day last year. So I'm glad about that. Um, <laughs> but I'm still waiting on it. Sorry, I'm being a little snide. So I had this big meeting this summer, like, okay, it's going to go through. I could sit there and say, here you go, and I'm going to take and do this, but it didn't. So I'm waiting on that. So I'm, that moral of the story is it's only a problem because of the sabbatical situation. However, for anybody else, if you're doing it, it's just free to do. Um, the, so um, what I ended up doing as a compromise is I split the book up. I said, well... Technically, since I just redid the videos, all the other stuff was work I had done previously. This is the text that goes with, this is my audio text that goes with my videos that I made. And all right, I packaged this with a CD, put it in the bookstore, and just let it be so that this would be what was sort of up for grabs. And then I continued to work well beyond my sabbatical and into the fall of creating an actual workbook like this, where I have you know, notes and activities and drawings. I actually had somebody that's a very nice artist, not me, draw some nice pictures. Can't find right now. Um, anyway, so I had to split them up. And so I just make one, the one that I made myself, optional, because at no point do I ever want a student to feel like they um, have to buy something that I made. This is clearly for their own help, so I don't want to sit there and drum up instant customers, so to speak. So um, I've just posted them on the web and I'm trying to figure out a way to distribute them because the other problem, and this is exactly where it happened with Premium Source. When I told the school, I said, here, everyone can have it, but let me just print it, package it. We could get it to a student for under $20. And so, no. We'll do it, they said. We'll do it. We'll let you not go through premium source, but we'll do it ourselves. We'll run it down there, and we'll take it to the bookstore. So it ended up being about $22. All right, not a big deal. Figured anything under 30 bucks is easy for students. Not easy, but not, it's not $200. Um, so then I posted it on my Blackboard site saying, hey, you can go into the bookstore and get this $22. It's great. It's got all the notes that you need. It's like the cliff notes of the textbook. And you can use any textbook that you want. You know, Go buy a $10 one off of Amazon. Whatever, I give you the lab packs you take home. You can come out of this class pretty cheap. This semester, I got a lot of complaints from students because they said, um, you said it was $22. The bookstore's charging over $30 for this now. And that's the problem. And that's why me, as a faculty member, I'm not trying to be greedy about the books, but ultimately the point was to get it in the students' hands cheaper and to prevent massive overprinting here and just give it to them. And it ends up, at least for me, easier to kind of circumvent, although I don't want to be a circumventor and set the stage for something that could create you know, a lot of problems. So there are problems that still need to be worked out and they are being discussed, which is why my situation's taken about a year and a half because I have acknowledged in our meetings that you know, what they allow me to do could set the stage for other things. How, so I'm um, very um, conscientious of that. However, that is a level of frustration and it's ultimately not serving the students well. So. That is, but then the, the benefit to the students have been, I no longer have students going through, you know, blackboards saying, oh my gosh, which thing should I print? What do I need to do? What, it's all together, it's in a row, I know, and sometimes not all students would print them off. So I don't know who has the notes, who doesn't. This way, they all have it. I know, at least I made the one that's in the bookstore required since I had to, since they were printing them and made a big deal about getting it in there. Um, so I knew at least they had one form of the notes. I wasn't getting in trouble from the library for massive printing. They're getting a smaller 
handier book that they can take with them. And it actually improved um, grades the first couple semesters that I had used it, where I was able to better dialogue with students because one of the frustrations I had and that I saw in students, the A and B students will always do well. They will see this as great. These are resources that I can use to do better. Here's the publisher resources. I can use them. They're always going to, they'll be able to navigate it. It's the C and lower students that are like, just tell me what I need to know. And they become too overwhelmed with, and you could do this, and you could do that. And they just are like, well, just what do I need to do? And I'm like, well, whatever your learning style is, if you like pictures, this is going to be working. If you like lists, this is going to work. And they're all the same thing. And they're just like rolling their eyes. So it really helped those students to say, this is what I need. I'm comfortable here. And when I need more help, I can go to these additional resources. And it, that really gave some comfort to this more struggling students. And I felt like it increased their retention in, in my dialogue with them. So that's really what I have to say in a nutshell, or a big nutshell. Yes? Did you look into self-publishing and making it an e-book? My master plan is <laughs> to make this where you have like clearly like a text, and you can read it. It's the, an iPad application. I'm dying to put this on an iPad format, which I was playing around with InDesign. I was driving Thatcher crazy about it, because I had sort of these visions without really knowing where I wanted to go with it. So I envisioned that you would read something here about tissue perfusion. You could launch an icon that would launch the video that goes with it. My videos have embedded quizzes, and it's got a table of contents so you can move around. But then you can also click here to say, I'd like to do the little quiz activity or coloring book or identification. So while you are looking at a single subject, you have all the resources that's going to help you learn that subject. You master it, then move on to the next segment. It's not like, here's the whole vessel lecture chapter, and here's all the stuff you can do. While there's the time to learn about names of arteries in your arm, here's a bunch of arm activities, and then move on to leg or something. You know, so it's very topic specific, because I found for online students, if you can break it up into manageable pieces, if they can put their kids to bed and sit down for an hour or two and say, this is what I'm going to master tonight. And I always tell them in class, live it, love it, learn it, and then get over it, be done with it, and put it away. And um, the smaller bite size, these are all the resources, give them better building blocks. And so I've tried to go with my online classes with that theme in mind. My pathology is that every time I have an issue, a student comes with an issue, I come up with a new handout or something that's going to help them. So it's my way of trying to manage my um, resource proliferation addiction and to actually consolidate it so that they can then manage it a little bit better. So that's it. Resource. Uh, that's <laughs> yes. the that's the <laughs> All right. So that's any questions. And, and so the ebook question I would like to do at some point, but I want them all together once I sort of get the hubbub done where I can freely do right. something right. with it and where people can launch what they need when they, um, when they need it as opposed to here's a lecture, here's a test question, you know, quiz questions, here's activities, put them where they need to be. And it's much more logical in an iPad idea because even the whole Prezi thing that's zipping around. That whole idea is great because I had envisioned even having a, if you're dealing with the endocrine system, a body picture. Here's a thyroid gland, you know, do the, and you, you can click on a head and zooms into the head and whoop, here's what a pituitary gland looks like. And you could zoom back out and say, well, what do the endocrine system, what about the pancreas? Zoom in and let's take a look at the slides. And so it would be really, I can, in my head, I have it pictured really cool to do it. It's hard to put it in this format, but most people like something tangible. So that's where I started with it. So, okay. Give you enough time, Matt? I think we're done. <laughs>